Like any entrepreneur, I spent long days and sleepless nights trying to get my company off the ground. And when we finally launched, it was exhilarating. But that thrill lasted for about a minute. And then the question became, how do we grow? Because starting a company and growing a company are two different things. As I've traveled the world meeting with business owners, I've come to realize different entrepreneurs have different growth goals. You have to ask yourself, what's my goal? How do I see my business growing? And then you can figure out the best options for getting there. In today's episode, we'll talk to a top entrepreneur who's seen both the upside and the downside of growing too fast. And we'll meet a business owner who has taken a very distinct path to growing her company. So come on, let's grow together. This is American Express Business Class. Growth is something that renowned chef and restaurateur Tom Colicchio is very familiar with. He grew his flagship restaurant, Kraft, into Kraft Hospitality, which now has seven establishments under its umbrella. He's also a co-founder of Witchcraft, a fast casual sandwich shop. When you were starting out, was building an empire like this always part of the plan? A absolutely not. My first cook's job was a short order cook at a swim club. Um, in Clark, New Jersey. I loved it, and then when I was about 15, my, my dad suggested that I become a chef. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I, something I enjoy doing. But no, I, I, I never envisioned um, what it turned into. I'm sure, I'm sure he had no idea. My family's idea of a chef was probably someone with a, uh, an apron on with a cigarette hanging out of their mouth, stirring, stirring the sauce or, or the gravy. And, you know, the <laughs> and they're bread. like, this is perfect yeah. for you. Yeah, well, a better alternative to where I was heading, put it, the, put it to that way. <laughs> So Tom, what advice would you give to a small business owner who's thinking about growing their business? Think long and hard and plan that next move. Yeah. Don't just jump into it because you see other chefs that are doing it. Other restaurateurs have multiple restaurants and, and you think you have to. I mean, so many chefs these days, are they get that first restaurant. Six months later, they have a second one. That's way too fast. Slow down, it's not gonna go away. You know, get a couple of years under your belt. Understand why it works. See if you can grow that restaurant and don't make that move for the sake of, of growing. Make it when you're ready to move. Right. Growing for the sake of growing is probably a mistake. Let's say you're, you're, you, know, you own a restaurant, it seems to be going pretty well, and you're sort of making this decision of, hey, do I start another restaurant? Or people seem to really like the sauce that I use for my pizza. Maybe I should bottle that sauce and put it on retail shelves. That's a really difficult business. And if you don't know that business, you're gonna struggle and you're probably not gonna be successful. It's really specialized. Now, if you're gonna go out and partner with someone who knows that business, yeah. then fine. That, that, that would be a good way to go about it. Don't do it yourself. Yeah. You know, this is the problem. Sometimes with chefs, they think because they're, you know, the, the, the experts in their kitchen, they're expert at everything. Yeah. And, and sometimes, sometimes we're not. <laughs> Tara Lazar moved back to her hometown to start F10 Creative with a single goal in mind, to run a locally sourced, affordable breakfast restaurant. But when that business took off, she realized that she wanted to do more, much more. I think the reason I didn't just duplicate Cheekies and do a lot of Cheekies all over the world is I felt that I succeeded in it and it was time to prove a different concept. And I wanted to try my hat at fine dining and I wanted to do a little catering and I wanted to own a drag bar. So I think that's just my personality of I love different kinds of challenges. The trick to Tara's growth lies in extending her core brand. And that requires discipline, research, and above all, remaining true to what makes her brand special. One of the worst case scenarios for us, we could create something that isn't in line with something that we do, and people say, oh, the quality's not as good, and therefore the whole F10 brand's going down. And I think that's part of something that we do well, is that we have made things that our loyalists are proud of. For Tara, the temptation to grow is moderated by her thoughtful approach to financing and by her desire to preserve the core essence of F10. As a business owner and trying to go into growth, I have two very clear choices. One of them is building the businesses organically with my own funding, and the other one is taking outside money. The upsides of taking outside money, I think, is that we have a lot more money to work with. We can grow faster, we can get the things we want instantly, but the downsides to that is obviously we have to answer to someone and profitability becomes much more of an objective than doing things we love and we want to do. One of the reasons I joined this industry is because there's so much of a creative element and I can't imagine someone dictating my creativity and I feel that that magic and that decision-making is what makes us successful. 
and then to see the success on the other side, can't beat that. You know, one of the biggest risks for expansion is that new customers might not want the same thing as your current ones do. So you really need to do your homework and make sure your expansion or extension plans make sense. Of course, growth as a goal is meaningless unless you can execute, and that takes resources, cash flow, talent. So your growth strategy has to play to your strengths and match your means. Over the past five episodes, we've met entrepreneurs who have put themselves out there from fashion and tech to home decor and hospitality. They were creating something new. And isn't that really the goal? They discovered how to build budgets on the fly and what it meant to create an authentic brand. They figured out how to grow their business while learning a ton about leadership along the way. It has been my greatest privilege to guide you on this journey. Thank you for watching.